Hello. What kind of a distress beacon could one make in a survival situation if, say, all you had was a keychain flashlight? Uh, I came up with something I initially thought, well, I could make it out of maybe solo cups or cut, uh, cut a uh, soda cans. Uh, those were two possibilities. Maybe use a, uh, empty uh, Coke bottles, empty soda bottles. There are all sorts of things you could use, but I wanted to think what could I actually fit in a survival kit. Uh, so, see if you can guess what it is I came up with for my distress beacon for, say, a life raft. This is uh, connected with my parafob wrap, which I have a video about. So you have a supply of paracord that's part of the experiment. Inside we have some candy. A roll of duct tape and also a flashlight, a keychain flashlight, and there's a ball chain connection. That's critical, that's part of the design. Some folded pieces of paper. This is in lieu of those solo cups or other devices. And then some kind of paper fastener. You can either use the tape, some uh, paper clips. I actually used a combination of things. See if you can guess what it is I'm going to make. Oh, another clue is uh, the ball chain. I show its functionality in the uh, next in the next part. So now we're going to gut the paracord to get to the inner yarns. We don't actually need nearly as long as this three meter length, and we only need a single strand. So instead of uh, paracord, you also could use other stuff like thread. Or I often have dental floss in my little mini kits. This happens to be eight yarn uh, paracord, most are seven, and we're going to use the uh, color-coded one. Originally the color coding designated what company made it, but I hear, they, I hear they abandoned that at one point. So I've gutted the paracord. You take one of the uh, inner runs, they're called yarns, I believe these individual strands are called the strands. Uh, but the three together make a yarn. We make a nice big ball at the end. That ball is going to act as your connection mechanism <coughs> to, the, uh, to the ball chain fastener. Normally, when this gets tighter and tighter and tighter, uh, you see how the coil gets tighter and tighter, eventually wants to knot up? That's why we're using the ball chain, because uh, it acts as a rotary pivot connect it into the ball chain fastener. That big blob at the end sort of acts as a uh, pseudo ball. There we go. Now, instead of it getting tighter and tighter and tighter, instead the ball chain rotates. So that's the mechanism, the strain relief, that keeps, keeps the cord from, uh, from corkscrewing. Right now there's a uh, light breeze from my window which is successfully making it rotate around maybe once a second or so. Uh, sometimes when there's a big gust of wind the whole thing uh, moves erratically. So ideally this should be supported both above and below rather than just hanging on a thread which is how I have it now. I like that it works even just hanging it without any cordage down to the ground. It makes it simpler to uh, construct. Let's uh, zoom in so you can see it a little closer. It's a loudspeaker behind it. So I've come to discover these duct tape spools you have to wrap very lightly and gingerly or else they don't dispense easily. 
this ring is going to be used as my dispenser holder. If you have trouble dispensing, you can sort of help it along like that. But only if you wrap them loosely will you get a nice, even deployment. You can get a nice, straight rip on these by going very quickly. Look how smooth and straight that is. And now for the candy. But no one figured out what this was for. It's for the cellophane. So that your distress beacon has color. You can use either red or I figured orange is often the light of strobe lights. So those are, that's why I picked those two flavors of candy. And now your flashlight has red illumination. So here it is at night, suspended with wire both above and below, spinning just from the breeze in my room from the open window, and it seems to work quite well. Here it is with the orangish colored cellophane candy wrapper, it almost has a green tint to it. Same light breeze from outside, spinning around, not being tethered from below, only from above. So this is now giving me a flash 360 degrees around my location. So hopefully I can attract ships or rescuers from all directions, all night, even while I'm sleeping, uh, with no energy expended by me. So I'm not wasting calories by spinning a flashlight around on a rope or uh, anything like that. Having fluorescent tape, which I usually carry in my survival kits, makes it easier to see even once the battery runs dead on the flashlight. So that's something that's very useful to have, sort of fluorescent tape. I also have a, flor a uh, retro reflective sticker on one side so that under a searchlight, there it is, the uh, light from the reflective sticker kind of shines. Uh, so that's nice, so it works even with no electricity at all, just wind power. turn off the lights. So this is sort of what it would look like to a uh, search boat with search lights. So here we have my automatic wind-powered rotation distress beacon. During the day, the fluorescent duct tape gets rescuers' attention. It also has retro-reflective tape, so searchlights will flash if they aim towards this. And it now has in the center, instead of my flashlight, uh, in, in, it instead has the Tic Tac solar-powered rechargeable glow light. Uh, so this hopefully would flash and get people's attention at night. So as long as you have wind and sun, you have off-the-grid uh, complete power. So here it is rotating at night from wind power, just from my uh, window being open, 
very light breeze indoors. In a uh, searchlight, the reflective uh, sticker that I put on one of the cones will make it easier to spot from somebody using searchlights.